the dangerous pattern of abduction of university students from their hostels is growing to a dangerous proportion in Nigeria. In the latest of such abduction, bandits kidnapped the five female students of Federal University of Federal University Dutsima in Castina State. The state police spokesman Abubakar Sadiq Aliyu, who confirmed abduction of the students, said some arrests have been made in connection with the incidents. In um, Zamfara State, we noticed this now in Castina State. Yes. Students will be in their hostel in university. I, I think that has reached a point now that states like Zamfara and um, Casina, students are only safe in the urban centers. I know this school, I know this um, federal university in Dusima. Dusima is one of at least 12 local governments that are constantly under attack by bandits in Casina State. So if you have such a situation, you must take extra steps to keep those students safe. You must take special, uh, 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 concrete steps. We, we hate to hear these kind of stories. So right now, huh? we should... uh, we, uh, the, the ones that were kidnapped were just recently, and that was uh, even, even just outside Guso, they are kidnapping people. You can't have schools in the hinterland not thoroughly protected against bandits, especially in two states where you know that bandits are running riot. These are neighboring states. Do we need so you can't have this kind of situation. Do we need young, uh, Twelve local governments, 12 local governments in Casina, bandits are running riot. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that we are having a resurgence of banditry in, in some of those states because at the time there was a lull. But if bandits feel that well, nobody seems to be um, resisting us, nobody seems to be um, protecting the people, of course they will carry out more of the activities. That, this is what we are seeing. The school is located uh, by the side of the road. But it is clear now that any community outside the state capital is not safe. Kankara, where they kidnapped those boys, is not really far from the state capital. Mm. Yeah, they went there and kidnapped people. Mm. All the uh, boarding, boarding um, uh, schools, the state government has said, no, we, we, are, we, are, we shut boarding facilities for now. All because of this banditry. But tertiary institutions, mm. there's no way you can treat them the way you treat secondary schools and say, okay, um, everybody uh, don't, just stay, stay in your houses. No. Because, I mean, it's just, it's just unfortunate that this is happening. What are those governors doing? I understand that the Zamfara governor uh, has come up with the idea of uh, having their own version of civilian JTF. But these things, they must move quickly with these ideas. And those things have to be protected better. This, this banditry is, 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 is such a big, uh, is, is a big disgrace. We are still arguing over, oh, what did uh, that some uh, governor of Zamfara was complaining that some people in government were negotiating with bandits and all that. We have not resolved that matter. And then this will happen. The governor of, Zam, uh, of Kasina must have had what happened in, in, in Zamfara. Why would you allow it to happen in your state? What's going on? I saw, I saw him. I saw him. Ah. Very troubling. Maybe um, members of the Nigerian army, as in, they were, they've already disarmed some bandits. They were all seated in the forest and everything. Mm -hmm. When I saw that picture, when I saw the number of bandits involved, mm -hmm. and I, it's like an industry in the north now. As in, mm -hmm. once you're above the age of 14, <coughs> you can carry if you get 47. Now, everybody, I don't understand. Maybe a sizable percentage of our youths now in the northern part of the country, they are taking up to this. 
Yeah, so I, that is the danger inherent I'm looking honest, at. Honestly, yeah. I, I think um, it is a, like a time bomb, okay? We don't know when it would explode, except something is done quickly. We've been saying this thing about banditry for a very long time. It, it, started, with, it even started with, yeah, yeah, it started it's with like, kidnapping. Do, you know, kidnapping now is like, you know, it has turned to a business. So banditry has also turned to, it's gradually turning into that. And you know, the more the, our security forces take these guys out, it's like they keep increasing by the day. Why? Because, and then the youth, just like you're saying, they are the easy praise into, by these bandits, you know, to bring them in and they become part of them. The government has to find a way to engage these youths. Because if we do not engage them, as they will from the security, they will no matter, because the thing is, if, if, if the place you is... You have to treat the symptoms. That is the, that is the problem. You know, it's like a cancer that is growing and it keeps growing. So if we don't hit the roots of the cancer, if we don't take it from the roots, it becomes a problem. So now what the government should do is provide the jobs first for youth to see that, okay, when once they leave Quick school, intervention programs. Yes. When once they leave school, there's something for them to get money. So that these guys don't just co hop them into their own group and then make them see that, oh, if you kidnap somebody, you get money. You know, because look at just students and just ordinary female students. And it was just an errand boy from, from the, new, the latest information that the police said they, you know, caught a suspect and it was one of the errand boys that the girls use, you know, to go and buy things for, for them. Was well, just the person that they use, you know. It takes just one person for something like this to happen. Just one informant, you know. So if somebody is gainfully employed, he will not be thinking of crime. And even if he thinks of crime, he would look at the... How, if, if I go into crime, what will be the after effects? You know, so I, what I've noticed is that people just feel that when one go into crime, nothing will happen. So prosecution, that is where the legislature, the, the, the National Assembly, and even the State House of Assembly, most of them will have to come up with stringent laws for crime, against crime. So if you steal, if they catch you for kidnapping, for instance, if they give you like 100 years, because I've never seen any of our laws that will say 100 years, they sentence somebody to 100 years imprisonment. By the time you are 16 or you are 18, and then they sentence you to 100 years, just know that you are, you are gone. You know, we need to find a way whereby people will know that crime is bad. Because when we are young, we know that even to even steal meat in the pot, you know what it means, you know? But now is is <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> How do you find a way to tell people that crime is bad in the midst of poverty? One hundred and thirty-three million people are, you know, are poor or are said to be in the poverty region, and you know, it seems to be a big industry. The thing is striving. So for any time I get to look at, maybe our producer will just go to that court away and I see people and I look at these are young young men. These are the future of any society. These are farmers. I, These I, are. I know even the police will be overwhelmed now, sir. The, you don't even have the manpower. When I, to when I uh, spoke with the governor of Casino State, the former governor, mm, right on the road. Yes, he said that there was more troubled about the fact that more and more women are getting involved in banditry. Women. Yes, they are the ones who provide them with uh, the intelligence that they use. They couldn't have known where those students reside, mm. you mm. know, without somebody provided, providing the information. information. Mm. So they spend a lot of money on informants. They spend a lot of money in informants. They reward informants bountifully so that those informants will always step forward and provide them with the information that they need. There are some people that stand by the roadside. You think that they are hawkers. They look into your vehicle, you know, to know who you are. And then they will just make a phone call and alert the, those bandits that, oh, the social vehicle is on the way. This is the person who is inside. I've seen him. He's a rich person. You just see that in the next village, they attack you. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is important to deal with this issue from its roots. Mm -hmm. After more than a decade of serious banditry in Zamfara mm. and Kasina. 
we should at least be able to tell ourselves that uh, we have some form of respite. But that's not what we are saying. That's not what we are saying. Coming attractive, it's coming lucrative. Mm -hmm. Big in Basari on 27th July, uh, Basari, local government, is also not far from uh, uh, the state capital. 14 persons, they just took them away. It's like that. That is the pattern. Some local governments are safer than others. Some don't even try it. Many, many parts of the Northwest, people have left their homes because of the constant harassment by bandits. This happened in Sokoto, Kasina, uh, Zamfara, Kaduna. People have left their homes. So we need drastic steps to deal with these people. And it is clear that they have even uh, mixed with our people. Mm -hmm. So it makes it exactly. very difficult. This type of banditry is difficult to use military, oh, no. uh, this thing. Because they, they, they live around our people. They are informants around our people. They show up, carry out their operation, and then disappear into the bush. So military solution is not... It's not uh, enough. Not an option. Look, our people in northern Nigeria, for well, example, right, they, they, they like farming. They are the ones who feed the nation. Government must truly commit to a, a agricultural revolution. We've been talking about a green revolution for years. Shagari talked about the green revolution. Some people came and said, no, it's not green revolution, it's greed uh, revolution. Obasanjo did Operation Feed the Nation when he was a military ruler. President Tinobu now has said that they are going to cultivate about 50,000 hectares. Let us see steps being taken. In the North, for example, hire young people. Mm -hmm. I hear young people uh, set aside huge expanse of land mm -hmm. for farming. Let's engage these young people. It's what they like to do. Yes. Let's engage them and reward them. Mm -hmm. So instead of just living there, there's endemic property in the north. But, but now, I bandits are telling true. them. That, uh, uh, <laughs> even if you see the MBS <laughs> statistics, you show that poverty, the, the extent of poverty varies from state to state. state. To state. Extent of inflation varies from state to state. Yes, we all suffer from it. We all have our share. But when you see the level of poverty in some places, you will say, oh, I know. My, our own case is, is better. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. There are people in Nigeria who have never owned 1,000 naira of their own. Mm. It's that bad. So why won't some people be easy for bandits to uh, uh, mislead and then... Uh, Get them to work for them. How is Boko Haram able to recruit people? It's, it's endemic poverty. Boko Haram even went to the extent of giving loans to people. Hmm.